appreciate your support. We appreciate everything that you've been doing. Some of you for a few months and some of you for a decade plus. We have a panel here that we're really excited about, but beforehand, let's just go through a couple of administrative slides. Let's do it. Here we go. Um, you're gonna be on mute for a period of time. This, is, this event is gonna be recorded, so we share it with other people. Um, you will not be seen, so don't worry. You could be in your pajamas and it's all good, especially if you're in Australia, because it's probably like the middle of the night there. And closed captioning is available. Next slide, please. Okay, we have a quick introduction. We we'll do some fun and games, some Q and A. Again, as a reminder, my name is David Siegel, and I'm the CEO of Meetup. And I think this is the last slide. Am I right? Is there another slide? Let's assume no. What are we doing here today? We are here to celebrate, like the song said, good times and meaningful times, which maybe isn't in the song, but maybe it should be. Uh, in terms of 20 years of Meetup, we have four extraordinary people that we're going to be talking to and having questions with. They have a combined 60 years of experience, not in life, much more in life, but in Meetup. They have combined 60 years of experience in Meetup, which is absolutely quite extraordinary. So we're going to start off. I'm going to quickly share uh, my story and um, about Meetup, and then we'll do a quick introduction by each of the panelists. So here we go. So actually, no, let's do the introduction of everyone first. Daniel, tell us about yourself. Great, thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm Daniel, I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. I, I'm a college professor. I teach rhetoric and uh, essentially spe other speech communication classes. I'm also a writer, a cyclist, a fitness enthusiast, a humorist. Uh, I do stand up and comedic monologues. I'm a huge pop culture person, and I am just really excited to be here with uh, everyone today. Thank you. And your meetup group is? Getting to know Greensboro and beyond. Getting to know Greensboro and beyond. Awesome. Like there's a beyond beside Greensboro, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> Kenneth, introduce yourself, please. Hi, David. Thank you for having us today. I am from the country of Brooklyn. Yes, indeed. And a guiding question in my life is, what would I do for free, even if someone is willing to pay me? The answer for me is running. And that's what led me to host a running group here in New York. We are called the Not So Serious Group. We welcome everyone and anyone. And I look forward to this discussion. Absolutely. Thank you for all that you do. And now let's pass it on to your partner in crime, Brian. Brian is not here, the partner in crime. That's okay. Let's go to uh, Jeff. Hey, uh, I'm Jeff Miller. Thanks for having me. Uh, five years Navy and then uh, air traffic controller for 34 years. I needed things to retire to, not just retire from. So got involved with Meetup uh, in 2008 as a uh, co-organizer then in 2010 as an organizer of the new group tennis uh triangle tennis enthusiasts um back in 2019 we expanded to pickleball uh triangle pickleball enthusiasts and um uh, it's just like i said things to do things to retire to not just retire from beautiful we are going to learn from Jeff, we're going to learn from Ken, and we're going to learn from Daniel, and I'm excited to have each of you have that opportunity. First, I just want to share a little bit about my personal Meetup story, um, because obviously I'm not the founder of Meetup. The founder of Meetup is an extraordinary individual named Scott Heiferman. Uh, we are celebrating our anniversary relatively soon. We're going to ask that shortly, um, and Scott is going to be speaking at the anniversary, and fortunately, his... Um, his connection to the company will last forever. I joined Meetup three and a half years ago. And the reason for it is um, because of my kind of deep seated love for community. I grew up in a, um, in a modern Orthodox Jewish community where at different times in, in life, um, people had sorrows and people would um, share and support them. If someone, let's say, God forbid, passed away, they, they wouldn't you know, need to cook for another multiple weeks. If someone uh, and was having an amazing celebration, then that joy and celebration, someone having a child would be even greater you know, in doing it with community. So I was always surrounded myself with community. 
And when the opportunity came up to join Meetup, I had been going to Meetup events forever, but I had never been an organizer. I just jumped at that opportunity, um, despite the fact that at the time it was owned by WeWork. But I never appreciated the power of Meetup until I became an organizer. And I am now an organizer of a group. And the reason that I am organizer of the group and what the group does is I teach entrepreneurship and strategy at Columbia University kind of on the side one semester a year. And it is incredibly meaningful for me. And I've had you know four or 500 different students through the years and I don't know how to keep in touch with them. I don't know how to create a community of people that had attended my class and had been in my class a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, and to connect those people to each other. And they're such extraordinary individuals that I decided to create a meetup group. It's called Alumni of David Siegel's um, Strategy and Entrepreneurship Class. Good. Good. And it is such an amazing experience because I'm introducing, I'm staying in touch with people I haven't seen in five years and seven years. We get together every month or every two months, sometimes online, sometimes in person. And people are meeting each other that have graduated four, five, six years apart, and they're helping each other around, they're supporting each other. And I just love being a meetup organizer. And that's my meetup story. So first thing we're gonna do is ask a poll question. So if we can put the poll question up on the screen, here we go. What day is meetups 20th? Not five, five, not 10, not 15, but 20th year anniversary. Well, most studies have shown that crowdsourcing works, crowdsourcing, will end up almost always getting to the right answer. Let's see whether the actual anniversary is today the 9th, on the 14th, or on the 25th. Hmm, perhaps it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit biased because of the fact that today is the 9th. The answer is actually in five days from now. June 14th is the 20th anniversary. And what that means is the website meetup.com went live in, two, in, in June 14th, 2002 which is a lot less interesting to all of you, but it also happens to be my daughter's 15th birthday. <laughs> so a double celebration on June 14th of this year, which I'm really excited about. Now that you've met some of the people here, we're gonna ask a couple of questions. The first thing I do wanna do is we're gonna to talk to Daniel, but first I just wanna ask the audience, cause I'm gonna to talk to Daniel about, Daniel, why did you join Meetup? But before we have <coughs> Daniel share, if you could just go into chat and take, you know, just 10, 15 seconds, and put into chat because we're here to celebrate. And celebration is not the panelists, but why, what was the number one reason why you decided to join Meetup? If you could put that into chat for others to see, that would be just meaningful. And that's what we're trying to do. Share the meeting, share the love, share our experiences, uh, nice. put into chat why you joined Meetup in the first place. And then I'll pass it on to Daniel shortly. Connecting with people, Gina says socializing. Um, help, help to meet people with similar interests says share making friends with uh, new people, making new friends, meeting people who share your interests, meet interesting people, meet local people, first join meet up around photography, to deal with a bad situation, to learn more Spanish, making new friends, hiking, music and food, two great things, love them both. Um, finding meetup to find love, beautiful, science fiction and, and, uh, and fans, hosted a film meetup, sec uh, filled up their cup, dance club, book club, um, karaoke, okay. So lots of amazing reasons why all these people keep it coming and check out in the chat why other people join Meetup because maybe there's a reason that you didn't that could be relevant for you. But Daniel, tell us why did you join Meetup in the first place? Well, that's a wonderful question, Dave, and the answer really lies with a friend of mine. I, I met a, a guy named Logan who lived in Raleigh at a social networking event down there. And he said, you know, after we got to know each other, he said, oh, my God, there's this really wonderful new group out there called Meetup. And I'm a member of a 2030s, you know, Meetup here in Raleigh. And I think you should come as my guest. And I did. And I found it was just such a wonderful way to meet, you know, younger professional people who were approximately, you know, my age at that time. And you know, so I started going as Logan's guest and then I joined that group. And then I said, wait a minute, you know, I'm driving like 90 minutes one way and I'm having a really good time. It's totally worth it, but surely there must be something in Greensboro. And then I started looking and there really wasn't that much here at the time. So I said, I've got to bring this concept to this town, to my town. 
And that's exactly what I did. I started my first meetup group at that time. And I just found it to be such a wonderful way of meeting and connecting with new people. And if you're a a face-to-face guy like I am, I mean, the whole, you know, concept the meetup really was geared towards you know those kind of meetings and those kind of interactions and you know it was just perfect it it really met my needs in you know just a tremendous way amazing okay let's take a guess now who could guess how long ago daniel joined meetup was it in 2004 just take a guess was it in 2017 check out the poll was it in 2006 now remember, we were founded in 2002, so it was definitely not going to be before that, because that would have been made Daniel the founder of Meetup, which uh, <laughs> you know he, you know, he was an early person, but not necessarily that early. Okay, let's see. And the answer is 2004 is when Daniel joined Meetup. So OMG, that's uh, 18 years ago. So you are officially able to vote. Congrats. We will um, try to decide what kind of things to put to, to the vote for you. And uh, you know, you're not able to drink at it, meet up, but you're able to vote as an 18 year old. So my son, my, my middle son just turned 18 years old. So uh, good. He can't drink yet. Um, okay. So let's also now go to the next question for Daniel, which is tell us a little bit about, and you, you, you touched on it already about why you became an organizer. Is there anything more you want to share about your group and, and why you became an organizer of your group? Well, you know, I, I guess the, the, the main reason was I wanted to have meetup events in my town. You know, I didn't want to have to continue traveling, you know, 90 minutes uh, one way to, you know, attend meetup events. So I said, you know, we got to bring this to Greensboro. I got to bring this to Greensboro. And, you know, that's why I started my, my first Greensboro group. And, you know, it took a little time to kind of really get going and build up a core group of people and start to doing a, a lot of interesting and diverse activities. But, you know, with a little patience and with a little TLC, you know, we, we got there and the group really at, at a certain point, it just took off and we had lots of people joining and we were doing all kinds of different activities. And it was just a really amazing and, and fun thing to do. Awesome. Great. Now, not everyone knows the story about Barack Obama and the influence that he had on helping to grow Mita. But in 2004, it was a senatorial candidate who said, anyone who gets you know, 500 or 1,000 people to come to my um, to an event with me, I will show up and let's make it a meetup event. Barack Obama has really recently written a book. He's going around the country talking all about um, a couple, two different tech companies that had a big influence on his growth and his success in becoming a senatorial candidate and ultimately a president. So next poll, please. Let's see how well people do so far, which is was <laughs> for his for his campaign. Was it MySpace, Instagram or TikTok? Uh, and it's actually more for his senatorial campaign than presidential campaign, I may add. But he did use it also for his presidential campaign uh, and a senatorial campaign. Um, it would be shocking if it was TikTok since that didn't exist. So the one of you that said it, um, Timing's a little bit off there. The answer is the crowd is correct. The two different businesses that were most impactful in um, in helping Barack Obama become senator and becoming president were MySpace. Not everyone knows this, which doesn't. I don't know if it, it might exist still, but certainly not as big as it used to. I I don't think I've been to MySpace in ten or twelve years. So perhaps there's something on MySpace.com, um, and and Meetup. Meetup is still thriving and growing, and I don't know about the others. Um, David Good just sent a message, and I love the fact that he's here because he's just one of my favorite people and favorite organizers. David, I hope you're doing great. Okay, last question for Daniel, and we're going to go over to Jeff. Daniel, earliest memory of a using Meetup. What is your one of your earliest memories of using Meetup? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, one of my earliest memories, I, I, you know, what I remember is the first place that we ever held an event at in Greensboro. It was this really wonderful uh, restaurant slash bar. It's, it's not with us anymore, but 
you know, at the time, it was just such a wonderful, welcoming place. Um, the owners and the managers were really happy to have us. They were very interested in hearing about Meetup and what we were doing. And the thing that I really remember is that they gave us a special area and they would always do this whenever I would book a Meetup event there. They would give us an area uh, in the restaurant called their Sofa Lounge which was just the perfect like meeting, you know, talking, conversing activity space. I mean, it was sort of semi secluded. Um, it had all these comfortable sofas and, and chairs and there were, there were tables and, you know, it was just like the best space, you know, I could imagine to have a meetup. So that's probably my, my earliest memory, especially awesome. when you were talking about Greensboro. You know, venue matters. And when you're able to find a great venue and you're able to consist consistently go to that great venue, it really does make a difference. I'm glad you had that great experience. Okay, we're gonna pass the baton on to Jeff. Thank you, Daniel. Maybe we'll have time and chance to get back to you. And uh, thank you for all the things that you do as a meetup organizer. Jeff has organized a lot attended or organized a lot of events, a lot of events Jeff has attended and organized. And I wonder if anyone here has attended maybe more than Jeff, we will find out, but let's do another poll to ask the audience, how many different events do you think that Jeff Miller has attended? Let's see what the, uh, what the people say. Is it 562 meetup attend events he's attended or organized? 1475 for 7,000 events. Woo! They're all a lot. And the answer is 1,475 events. Okay, I have to ask in chat. So open up the chat here. If there's anyone who has attended or organized more than 1,475 events, feel free to put it into chat because, wow, we want to definitely hear from you. And even if Whoa, David, good has. David, how much, David, put into chat what your number is, more than 1,475. That is a really, really large number. Um, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. February, let's see. Almost 200 events, 1,500 by Debbie Debbie. David's going to go and check. Okay, we have 1,500 events, 2,600 events by Nicholas. My goodness. These are, keep, 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 keep these coming and share and share if, if you send it a lot of events. So, Jeff, I've got to ask you. You've attended 1,475 events. Um, what in your mind was the best event that you think you've ever attended? I attended a lot, but let's hear what you what your favorite event that you've ever attended or organized. It can be attended or organized. Share that. And just take yourself off of me tip. Unless this is uh test. Yeah, we hear you great. We hear okay, you great. good. Thank you, John. Uh, favorite. Well, this is a tennis group, but uh, we did a monthly social, purely social um, uh, event, called it the monthly tradition. And I think the favorite was one time, one of our members is a thespian and uh, she would play, be in plays around the area. And uh, yeah, I organized several, but one in particular where uh, we went and there were 30 some of us that went and supported her. And although she had a supporting role, man, she just stole it. <laughs> she stole the show. She was so good. Um, but yeah, she also sings in a band and yeah, we support that kind of thing. You know? And it's kind of nice because we're out on tennis court. Right. I remember our first social, you know, we're seeing everybody dressed up in something other than tennis talks. That's like, Wow, you clean up nicely. <laughs> so, yeah. One of my favorite things in Meetup is when you take people out of the standard ways in which you typically will get together. So there's yeah. a hiking group and then suddenly you're all having dinner together and you yeah. might dress up a little bit differently or you're playing tennis together and now you're all going to theater together because yeah. kind of, you know, Jeff, like we're all whole people and we all have so many different parts of our personality and parts of our interest. And when you're able to kind of, you know, go running at one side with one group but then the second side, you know, talk about, you know, support related or some vulnerability related issue to help family. To me, that's one of the best parts of community. So yes. I really like that you gave that, you gave that example. 
You know, I want to share the love and I want us to learn from each other. And Jeff, I'm going to come right back to you, ask you another question, but let's just put in chat now that we just put in chat already, kind of lots of events that people have gone to put in your favorite event that you ever attended, that you've ever, uh, Orville, 1,833 events. These are amazing, amazing numbers. Ever attended or organized? Just put in a little quick snapshot of, of your favorite event you ever attended or organized. And one part of the reason I want to do that is because tubing on the Dan River, because maybe we're going to come up with some ideas that you could share with each other, right? Sailed in three masted sailboats in the Elliott Bay, the Philosophy Group on Mondays, best of attend event you've ever, ever attended. Okay, someone likes free pool and pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Tubing on the uh, on the river, beachcombing on the river, lots of rivers, barbecue and jam, rose festival. Uh, let's see, uh, dinner at a special hideaway, Six Flags in New England, Monday Night Podcast Club. I should join that. I have a podcast, but keep connected. I should be in the Monday Night Podcast Club. Poetry readings, blueberry pie, <laughs> formal dress. A formal dress. That's nice. It's always fun to get dressed up and. Uh, and, uh, and uh, do something meaningful. Looks like a formal dress where people went to a charity event together was a particularly special memory that people have. Okay, we are gonna hold on to this and Michigan Lakeshore Wine and Wine Winery. So at Christmas Harp Concerts, we're gonna hold on to this and we're gonna save this and we might follow up with you. I hope you don't mind and see if you know there's a, a story that, that we might wanna share with others in additional detail about some of these um, events that, that were particularly meaningful for you. You know, this is a special anniversary time and in anniversary, you know, right now, my wife and I have been married this June 27th will be 23 years. And whenever you're married or have any kind of anniversary, it's a great opportunity to look back, look back about the joys, look back about the challenges and every challenge is just another opportunity. And thank you <laughs> about the congratulations. It's been, it's been amazing 23 years. Um, and that's, you know, that's what we're doing here at Meetup. Because you know, there's not enough celebration in this world, is what I would say. There's not enough celebration. And every person here really does deserve a way to celebrate, celebrate their hard work as organizers, as members. And I'm just really appreciative. So let's get back to Jeff. And 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 Jeff, if you could tell us a little bit about how Meetup in your mind has impacted you in your life as a person, please share impacted me um well i've uh, impact in that it's allowed me to continue doing things that i did in my career i've always enjoyed building things developing refining um building community building volunteer bases and um yeah it's given me a platform to reach out find similar you know minded people who want to give back to the community um via volunteer initiatives um so yeah it's it just like i said it allowed me to continue building things even after i retired you know when you could do good and help others um it's an amazing amazing thing and the fact that you met your wife is that right yeah i met her on court back in well we've known each other since 2008 um, and, uh, yeah, we're getting married August 26. We've known each other a long time, best of friends. And Woo! finally one day we just kind of, we always had an attraction for each other, but there was always someone else in the way. And, um, yeah, we finally just kind of stood back and realized, yeah, all right, this, it, it was meant to be right. You know, so and it was a meetup event that you, that the two of you yep. met yep. Oh, on tennis court. Yep. That's, that's, so when people say that the score was like 40 love or love, love, you actually yeah. meant it. Yeah. But I'm bummed. Bad joke. Daniel would have had a much better joke as a comedian. Um, but one of the things that that points to for me is just the serendipity, the serendipity that has happened to every single one of us personally and professionally that, you know, you could be on a hike with someone and then suddenly that person turns into like a co-founder of your company, right? And it's just a crazy thing that running can turn into, or playing tennis can turn into, you know, the, your future <laughs> significant other, which is just so meaningful. Or you could be just doing something socially and that could turn into like a major business opportunity that you never would have realized yeah. beforehand. So, so Jeff, thank you for, for sharing. That's a pretty, pretty decent impact on life, I would say. Yeah. 
Um, it looks like Emily, you're going to share some group photos and stories. Is that right? And then we're going to go to Ken and Brian. Okay, so let's do it. Teeing up group photos and stories. Emily, here we go. Um, so this is uh, Daniel. You want to talk to this? And just take yourself off of mute, please. But he took himself off a of video. Oops. Okay, I think I'm unmuted at this point. Okay, anyway, this is our missing person spot at the last uh, Super Bowl party we did. And there's a really poignant story you know, attached to this picture. Um, one of our members, he was a, uh, a gentleman named Giles. Um, Giles was just a wonderful person. You know, everybody loved Giles. Giles just really added, you know, he added so much to any event that he would attend. And he always came to the Super Bowl party. He, all, he usually came to most of the sporting or sports themed events we had. But right before this particular Super Bowl party, I, I got the very sad news that Giles had passed away unexpectedly. And when I got to the venue, you know, I realized that we had to do something, you know, for, for Giles. I had to, you know, break the news to the other attendees that, you know, Giles what wouldn't, wasn't going to be with us. He wouldn't be with us ever again. He had passed away. It was a very uh, sad moment. So what we decided to do for him is to basically create a place or a space where he could be with us in spirit. And this is what this photo is all about. You notice we gave him uh, a menu, we gave him uh, some uh, a silverware setting. Uh, his favorite beer was a Corona. So we made sure that he had an open Corona, you know, with a lime, you know, stuck in the top, as you see there. And this just became the way for Giles to kind of be with us in spirit, you know, for an event that he would have absolutely have attended anyway. And if there was sort of a lighter moment about this, you know, and of course we also toasted him. One of our members also said a prayer for the repose of his soul. But if there was a lighter moment about this, the waiter that we had just didn't get the didn't get the concept. And he kept on asking me, he like, well, when is this person coming? I, you know, um, and then when he when he finally realized what we were doing, he's like, oh, OK, well, well, whose tab should I, I put the beer on? And I'm like, you, you can just put that on my tab. It, it will be fine. It will be totally fine. And by the way, nobody's going to drink this beer and you'll just need to you know, take care of it at the, at the end of the evening. So that just became sort of a lighter moment you know, during, during this time. But yeah, but everybody really missed Giles and we just had to do something for him. And that's what this photograph is all about. Daniel, thank you for sharing that. You know, uh, a big part of community is to support each other in joy and support each other in challenges. And that's a really um, meaningful way and a, and, a, and a photo that you took, you know, around, around a difficult time for, I'm sure, you know, you and so many others. Um, if you could go to the next photo, that would be, uh, that would be great. Jeff, nice, nice picture here. Feel free to share some old TV you got going on. And Jeff, just take yourself off a of mute as well. There we go. Unmuted now, right? Yep, you're good. Okay. All right. Well, this was uh, no October 2013. Uh, the situation was this was one of our monthly traditions, but we had turned it into, well, they had turned it into a retirement party for me. And um, during the evening, you know, a lot of discussion about how meetup and uh, the Triangle Tennis enthusiasts had changed people's lives and the MC who is not pictured here he had called for all the couples who had met on the tennis court through triangle 
uh, tennis enthusiasts to come forward. And there are six couples here. Um, and each one of us stepped up and spoke briefly on, uh, yeah, what, what uh, meet up and triangle tennis enthusiasts meant to us and in our relationships. So, yeah. Really, really nice. And, and, you know, again, that's a time of milestone. It's a milestone time. And I would yeah. say meetup oftentimes as community in general is there for different people's milestones in life. You move to a new city, it's a potentially stressful time. Community is hopefully there. You're retiring, could be a potentially stressful time. Community is there. So Jeff, thank you for sharing that picture. And hopefully you're enjoying retirement. And when you get married, you'll enjoy it even more. Go yeah. to the next, next one, please. Okay, let's have Ken and Brian. Either Ken or Brian, why don't you share about the Sirius Running Group, New York City? Sure, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll start and I'll pass it off to Kenny just to say that. So we, we have runs now on uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and uh, Sundays. Uh, Sunday was the original and um, I host Sundays. Kenny hosts on Saturdays. So um, saw this pick and uh, the runs have been getting bigger and bigger over the years. So this is a, a great turnout. Kenny? That's a big, big run. Hopefully we weren't running into each other. That is amazing. Kenny? So David, I have to say that it's called a not so serious running group. And to that, uh, you know, to that point, I had shown this picture to one of my friends and he looked at this picture and says, you know, you guys are the planet fitness of running groups. I said, what does that mean? I said, like, I'm looking at this picture and you take everyone and anyone, no judgment. Now, I didn't know whether that was a compliment or a diss, but I took that as, you know, you know, a big compliment because that's what we're all about. We're universal. We're inclusive. You can take a look at this picture in Central Park and everyone and anyone is represented in there. And that's what we try and do at uh, the Not So Serious Run Group. Beautiful. Beautiful. And hopefully there are some people that, you know, even if they become serious runners, they can still be in the Not So Serious Running Group because one should never take oneself too seriously. Uh, in life, generally speaking, and I, and I try to I try to live that to my children's uh, embarrassment. Oftentimes, uh, is there another? Is there another? No, there is not. Okay, so now we have not yet heard in detail from Brian and and Kenny. So the two of you can decide which of the which who wants to answer the next question. But we're going to go to a poll again. And here is the question for the not so serious running group in the country of Brooklyn: How many? Um, individuals are in this group. Let's take a last poll. I think this is the last poll that we have. And the answer is the crowd correct. 4,029 not so serious runners in the New York City group. Wow, <coughs> that is a lot of not so serious runner groups. So Kenny or Brian, whoever wants to start here, tell us about your group, when did you start it, and just share a little bit more. Sure, sure, definitely. Uh, so yeah, it's a not so serious running group uh, based at NYC, which started in 2013. And uh, yeah, we're a running group aimed at uh, always being welcoming to runners of all levels, um, especially beginners. Uh, we've expanded from a group of people who run together into a broader community, uh, where we focus on not just running, but on uh, <coughs> building meaningful connections and, uh, and friendships. And, uh, you know, the first event that kicked it off was Run and Brunch on Sundays, uh, which is still going strong, uh, along with more runs and uh, a ton of social events. Uh, and yeah, like you said, currently we just passed 4,000 members uh, and our uh, unofficial mottos are no runner left behind. And the only thing serious is brunch. Okay, yeah. but it's, it's run like and that. then brunch, not brunch and then run, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Run that would be, and then brunch. That, that, would, that would be tough to run after the brunch. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. I guess they're running beer, running brunch. Got to do. So, yeah, food has to be involved somehow, right? Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. We're we're doing a brewery run this uh, this weekend on Sunday, which is a new event for us. So amazing, amazing, Kenny. Let's hear it. What do you got? You know, we had this one uh, runner come to the group, and she's like, "You're the Goldilocks of running clubs." I said, "What does that mean?" She said, you know, I went to this one running group. They were really fast and really serious. I went to this other running group. They were called the slow as F running group. And they were slow as F. And she says, you're the Goldilocks. You're just right. I never saw her again. 
but that's what we try and be. We try to be right in the middle. And a big phrase for me that has resonated, especially post pandemic, is that community makes good people better. And that's one of the reasons that I joined the running group. Can I run by myself? Sure. But when I run in the group, a group, it elevates my game. And most importantly, we do this because, and you know, David, I appreciate how often you use the word meaningful. You know, in the past, maybe people went to religious institutions on a regular basis, but today, you know, not so serious is like my religious institution. Every Saturday I'm there seeing the same people, doing the activity that energizes me. And from that, we have movement, we have meaningful relationships, and we have self-discovery. And that's the, uh, you know, what this group has brought to me. And, you know, I have to thank Meetup for, for being the catalyst of that. Ah, oh, so beautiful, so beautiful. And it's true, you know, communal institutions, you know, Robert Putnam, who is a, a famous author, wrote one of the most well-known books or sociological books in the last generation. And it's called Bowling Alone. And Bowling Alone really talks about the concept of breakdown of communities, whether it's religious organizations, synagogues, mosques, and, and, and churches, and, and temples, et cetera, or other just institutions. And he says, there are more people bowling today, but they're bowling alone. They aren't a part of bowling leagues like my grandma Martha and grandpa Bernie who were in a bowling league together, you know, in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, or me and my mom were actually on a bowling team of, of, a, of a mother-son bowling team. We came in last place, in case you're wondering, uh, back when I was about seven or eight years old. But there, it isn't as common now. And, and Ken, you, re you really referenced that extremely well. Um, I just have to reference something that, because in the chat, Debbie was talking about the witches experience that she went to, where she went to a women's group and it happened to have been all people practicing Wicca, because we're talking about some history of meetup. Well, in 2002, I kid you not, the group that, that had the, mo the, the most groups of any one topic in 2002 was witches groups. <laughs> there were 446 witches groups in 2002, which is larger than any other topic area within Meetup. So it was going strong in 2002. Apparently it's also still going strong today in terms of people who practice Wicca. Um, and I'm referring to what, what I think it was Debbie and mentioned in the chat right now. So we, I am reading all the chat as we are going through this because it's so important for me to read it. And I'm gonna get a transcript uh, and read every single comment that people said. So speaking of chat, I have one final last chat question for everyone. And then we're gonna have Kenny and, and Brian answer this after we put this into chat. But just again, let's just celebrate and celebrate experiences. What is one thing, one thing that you never would have done, never would have experienced if it wasn't for Meetup? What is one thing you think that kind of Meetup opened up an opportunity for you um, that, that um, you know, it may not, you may not have had the opportunity to do it in the past? And, uh, you know, I just wanna share each other. Let's see, virtual chat, chats during the pandemic saved Karen's sanity. Thank you, Karen, I'm glad you're saying now. Getting out into the LGBT community. Oh my gosh, Manny, so important. I'm so glad you, that, that you um, found your people and found your community and, and, and you did that. Becoming an experienced photographer, Bill, that's awesome. Amazing that you would have done that. Loads of friends, Robert. Chances are you made a lot of friends even without Meetup, Robert. You're probably a friendly person. Um, so meeting new people, says Matthew. Joining a board green group. Uh, when my son and I travel to different cities, the first thing we do is find a strategy board game group in the different in the city. We were just in Charlotte a few months ago, and uh, it's one of my favorite ways to meet people. And I wouldn't have done that without Meetup. I will tell you that much. A book club with a thousand members. Not, whenever would have done without Meetup. The vegan community never would have done it without Meetup. Visiting Nottingham. Wow, I want to go to Nottingham someday. That sounds like out of a out of a, a fairy tale. Um, every month or every few months. Um, being part of motorcycle group, photography meetup group, um, having driving to Miami that never, someone never would have done. Um, uh, let's see, lots of lots of different opportunities here. Rehabbing your legs in a dance online group, Pearl. Yes, good, very important, and much more fun way to rehab than than a lot of physical therapy that's out there. there there's like fifty different answers of things that people wouldn't have done. But let's hear what Ken and or Brian or both of you would not have done if not for meetup. Brian, would you like to go first? Sure, yeah, yeah, I'll go first. Um, 
So thinking about that, uh, so I guess fun fact about me, I've actually created more than one meetup group in the past. Uh, I've had another one that was a happy hour meetup group and uh, met my close friend Patrick through that one uh, whose wedding I'll be in in July. So uh, for me, there's been so many rewarding one-on-one -on -one experiences, uh, personal experiences uh, through the running group, seeing people progress from running two miles to running half marathons. Um, we're still not so serious, but we support that. Uh, Joel is a member who comes to mind, who is one of our runners that just finished his first half marathon. Uh, Marina is another who's, um, you know, inspiring us by really pushing her limits um, of her running goals, which is great to see. And then just, you know, forming friendships, uh, you know, some of the, the first hosts that helped me out um, were really the ones that helped me grow the group. Kenny, Pat, Carrie, Ming Hao, all great members and all super close friends uh, now. Um, later this year, a bunch of us are running the NYC marathon together, which will be a great experience. And uh, yeah, Meetup has uh, helped make all that possible. I would say you and Meetup has definitely, you being the primary and Meetup definitely secondary has made that all possible. So Brian, really kudos. Um, Kenny, what do you got for us? You know, arguably we are in the most connected period of humanity. You have 5,000 Facebook friends, 5,000 LinkedIn friends, 5,000 IG friends. But in essence, what sometimes we, we lack, you can say intimacy or meaningfulness. And the three ways you create meaningfulness is a positive environment, consistently meeting people and meeting them consistently enough where you can be vulnerable. And Meetup has allowed that for me to occur. You know, connection, you know, you can go to any uh, internet platform, but Meetup has brought technology and IRL in real life. And we do it consistently, we do it positively, and we do it by being vulnerable. And that has allowed us, that, that has allowed us to create uh, meaningful connections. And without Meetup, that would not have occurred. Ah, uh, okay. I just really wanna urge each of you before we, we finish, and we're gonna be finishing in just one minute, one minute and this is over. Let's take a look at the chat. Just scroll through the chat. Take just 10, 15, 20 seconds to go through the <coughs> chat. There's so many kind of beautiful things that are being shared, experiences that people will never have done. And I just wanna encourage Emily and Janine and Brian and the people on our team to hold on to and get a transcript of the chat here because there's just some really amazing things. Please take the time just quick before you leave um, to read some of these messages. And I just really wanna close with one last statement, which is the reason that Meetup has had its success over the last 20 years is not because of Meetup. And the reason for all of your amazing experiences is not because of Meetup, it's truly because of the organizers. It's truly because of the unselfishness, the caring, the, the eagerness to help others, the eagerness to support each other and to, and to provide better experiences for others because of either challenges that we may have had or great experience that we have had. You know, some, one person once said to me, you know, what's your greatest source of inspiration, David? And this may sound a bad way to end, but I'll tell you what it is. For me, it's just knowing that we're on this earth for only a certain period of time. Could be on this earth for 60 years, hopefully not, 80 years, 100 years, 120 years. We don't know how long we're gonna be on this earth for. And our goals is to make the world a better place, full stop. Every single person, every organizer, has, who's a part of this and every member I may add, makes the world a better place. If there are people that want to, we're running a, a, a kind of a special quote unquote, just for our anniversary, for any person who's a member who would like to become an organizer for whatever reason, then um, you can put the slide up, Janine or Emily, if you'd like to. Um, and even if not, then please continue to be part of Meetup. Here's a QR code if you wanna scan it and if you wanna become a new organizer and, and, and it's just for this special time period right now and it's gonna be ending in honor of our anniversary. But I just wanted to thank every person here. I swear to you, I don't swear, you are making the world a better place. When you look back and you think about all the things that you have accomplished in your life, I, I am confident that the ability to make connections, to build relationships between people is gonna be one of those things that you say, gosh, I'm so glad I spent my time and energy doing it. And it's hard, it's really hard. And I just wanted to thank everyone for the incredible work that you all do. Happy anniversary to meet up. Happy anniversary to you. <laughs> and I look forward to celebrating our 25th, our 30th, our 40th and our 50th anniversary. Cause you know what? 
The world needs meet up more than ever, and the world needs each of you more than ever. So thank you so, so much. And have a wonderful rest of the day. And always remember to celebrate good times. Come on, as the song had said in the beginning. Take care, everyone.